I'm Erica Heald, and I originally set out to be a magazine journalist, but I very quickly found when I graduated from school that that was a fantastic way to live the rest of my life in a flat with eight other people. Um, I transitioned into doing digital marketing communications. With my consultancy, I work primarily with uh, startups that are selling technology solutions into the enterprise, so helping them figure out how to use content as a way to really connect to the right people for their product and to get their foot in the door there. And as part of all of this, I inherited Content Chat five years ago, and this is a weekly Twitter chat that's at noon uh, Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Oh, and I want to say it's it's evening time for the UK, but this chat basically brings together content creators, content marketing folks, and agencies that specialize in doing digital content. Um, and we talk about all sorts of topics and challenges and tools and trends in content marketing. So when you're working as a consultant and trying to help companies understand what kind of content distributed through what kinds of channels are really going to help them reach their ideal customer. There's always this level of everybody thinks that they are their customer. They think that they know the right channel. People have it in their mind that, oh, nobody does anything business related on Facebook, for instance, is one of my favorite misconceptions that I frequently have to overcome with clients. So with most of my clients, I use BuzzSumo as part of the kind of initial onboarding projects, whether it's a social client or a content client, we always start with doing an audit. So we audit social media channels and then we audit the blog and other owned content channels because I want to have an understanding of what they've been producing on what kind of a schedule. So one of the first things I do is I go in and I run the content report for their website, for their blog. Um, and take a look to see what content is actually getting people to engage with it and reshare it on social. And it's always fascinating because inevitably people are completely surprised. They have no idea which piece of content was the most shared. They have no idea which channel people are sharing things on. Um, for instance, everyone thinks that Reddit is someplace that nerds go to talk about whatever the latest memes are. And while that is 100% true, it's also a place where people are sharing all sorts of content to help them make business decisions. And that's something um, that a lot of companies don't think is happening until they can actually see, oh wait, we had some post apparently was shared on Reddit and oh look, then it was also shared 10X on every other channel too. So I love going in and doing that as a very first thing in BuzzSumo to help set the groundwork for the content strategy. And then of course, as any kind of an engagement matures, then I'm using BuzzSumo for the keyword notifications. And I specifically love that for branding purposes, I'm able to put it into Slack. So that way the moment that, for instance, um, I have one set up for Erica Healed and for our website, and if anybody links back to our website or mentions me, I'm immediately you know, notified of that in Slack. And what's so amazing about that is then sometimes I also find people doing things like stealing my content. One of my favorite things like that that I found was somebody had taken my Content Marketing Institute piece on how to define your brand voice and they paraphrased it word for word, section by section. When they ported it over, it still tagged me. And so I got a notification in Slack through BuzzSumo and then I was able to um, notify their ISP about it. So that was kind of brilliant. Once I have an established retainer with the client, one of the other things I do is I, at least every month, if not more frequently, depending upon their needs, I go in and I use BuzzSumo for content curation around their key uh, pillars and themes. Cause I want to make sure that we haven't missed out, for instance, on uh, relevant recent research or survey results that can help them uh, back up their brand messaging. So I go in there very regularly to see what is the content that's been most frequently shared um, on their topic areas. And I also, of course, have alerts set up on those topics too, so I can get you know, some real-time alerts, see, okay, here are the top 10 pieces that were shared in the last week, and you realize one of them is you know, an amazing piece of uh, relevant research, 
then you're able to pull that out and create some social um, sharing content around it and share it with you know, the market research uh, groups, et cetera. So I very frequently um, go in there and use the content curation tools. Of course, I use it in annual reporting as well because it's always good to do the year in review. So that is a very regular part of my workflow is to make sure that, you know, for any kind of regular reporting that we're always looking at it. So I have a client that I do. I specifically um, review all of their analytics on a quarterly basis and then give them um, feedback on how they should be adjusting their marketing programs for the coming quarter. So part of that is I go in and I show them all of the content, both from their website and from their blog that's been resonating and how that trend is um, you know, changing from the prior quarter. So it's a really good way to kind of take a pulse on what the health is of their content marketing efforts and let them know if they're seeing um, any kind of a drop off on some of the social sharing by other people in their channels. One of my clients that when I first onboarded them and went through and gave them all of the feedback of what was working really well for them, where their content was being shared, et cetera, you know, they really had that kind of aha moment where they realized they were not doing a good job with creating relevant social content for sharing and distributing their own content on any channel other than LinkedIn. So they actually went from I would say like more likes and very passive engagement to having 3x more people clicking through from their social content to their website based upon us going in and, and showing them with the BuzzSumo data which content was really getting shared and which channels were actually then driving the traffic that was coming back to the site. And it was really um, interesting because they'd sort of initially felt like, hey, we're getting great engagement here on LinkedIn with this. But what we were seeing is that was not the stuff that was actually being reshared. The stuff that was being reshared was the content that was also driving traffic to their website. And they hadn't really thought about the difference between the kinds of traffic and the different types of content before that. But they were able to actually see for instance, not having all the information in their social post was the content that was actually doing a good job for them. So it vastly increased their return on investment because as a nonprofit that was a membership association, their entire goal with social media is to drive that engagement and to drive memberships. And so if all you're doing is giving people all the information they need inside of a tweet, for instance, and you're never driving them back to your site and they're not seeing any value in that membership, then you're basically having negative ROI. So we were able to use um, BuzzSumo data to completely transform the entire approach that they had to their social media content um, and completely ramp up the way in which social media started to contribute traffic to their website. It keeps me out of the weeds. We used to have to take that kind of information and manually put it into a spreadsheet for every single piece of content I wanted to analyze. And I'd have to go in and you know do a manual word count and figure out all of the stuff by hand that by just typing in a URL to BuzzSumo within a couple minutes, I have a full data report with a beautiful chart and graph that I can just screen capture and plug into a presentation deck instead of spending days in Excel or in Google Sheets typing, which is not my favorite thing to do. Shockingly, right? Shockingly. Um, so for me, it, you know, working with BuzzSumo has just taken away a lot of the drudgery that I had to go through in order to compile and analyze data from my client's web content and from their social sharing of that content. And now I have it in a beautiful package that I can just download as a PDF and share with them. And then they're amazed and delighted. So what I love is that I'm able to use data, thanks to BuzzSumo, to help people gain a lot better understanding of who their audience is and where they're actually engaging with content.